So Microsoft had another event and it was really focused on hybrid communication, working from home, but also working from the office and better ways that teams can communicate and make it a more immersive experience both ways. So Microsoft have added a fair few additions to their software, things like Fluid Components, Microsoft Teams, Microsoft Outlooks, and modifications to existing hardware and software. So we're going to overview some of the major changes in this latest event. If you are new here, it'd be great to have you as a subscriber, so feel free to hit the subscription button before we begin. So there is a 20 minute video below which covers the whole event. It's a brilliant overview and Jared Spataro starts it off with Marissa Salazar diving into more about asynchronous communication. Now number one, I want to start with Fluid components. Now this is probably the largest update and I would say something they've made a more of a push on. Now Microsoft Fluid is not something that has been around for a couple of days. It's been around for about a year and a half I'd say and in different aspects it has been around for a longer period of time than that. But Fluid components are essentially live documents or files that can be edited anywhere in real time. So for example if you've got a Fluid component and you've created it inside of Microsoft Teams and you share the Fluid component link, essentially what happens is it becomes live everywhere else as a preview, which means everyone can modify it in real time. It's a little bit like how Coda and Notion Sync blocks works as well. So edits can be in sync and everyone can keep in contact with what is changing, which is a great addition, especially when you're remote or you're in person. And they've done a few changes to how this works, um, especially with meeting notes and things like that. But the second biggest change is how they're implementing this in Outlook calendar boards. Now, Outlook calendar boards we've covered. It's essentially a page in Outlook that overviews your agenda for the day, and you can do certain things like pinning elements, but they've really improved on this, allowing you to pin things like OneNote and also documents, and now adding the fluid components. So you can not only see your agenda, the weather, and some of the tasks you might have for Microsoft to do, but you can see some active documents that people are modifying in real time. Sort of reminds me of Evernote Home for Teams and allowing you to sort of collaborate together, which is quite nice. Um, and especially if you've got something quite important that you and your team are working on in real time, this is something that would just come to the forefront, uh, especially when you're accessing that. So Microsoft Teams is getting some great new additions. That's probably our third biggest update is the agenda side of stuff is getting improved. So for example, if you're taking meeting notes, you can use these fluid components whilst you're in a meeting and everyone gets the meeting notes in real time and that's handy not just for agenda for meeting notes too and if you want to as well you can convert them into a one note for more detailed notes that might require other information to be added now the fourth biggest update is probably the meeting layouts they've definitely improved in terms of improving the way that remote employees are featured so for example the interactions feel a lot better the people who are working um, remotely are definitely pictured better in the frames, for example, comparison to like the PowerPoint improvements. Um, so PowerPoint looks smaller, people look bigger, which is good because normally the PowerPoint takes center stage. And that's not necessarily true because everyone else is in the room there. The remote people should also be considered as well. It's quite a nice addition. Meeting layouts also include chat in real time and fluid components as well. So they're really betting on this fluid uh, components being a huge factor uh, when it comes to collaboration. Now, the fifth update is that if you you have two displays in your office, you could now spread the team across those two displays, which means for video meetings with say two other people, or if you had a third one, I believe would work, you can spread those people across those two screens. So it sort of feels like they're two separate people versus two people on one screen, which is quite a nice addition. Now the sixth update it really focuses on the hardware side. I don't want to go too much into this. They added a huge amount of camera modifications and also the additions to to audio and things like that. But there was one thing that really stood out, which was a camera they're introducing called Symmetry, which essentially is a camera like Facebook portal that tracks each person around the room, not tracks them like, uh, you know, what are they doing? But essentially, if that person's talking, it will highlight them a bit better. And also if that person's moving or demonstrating something, they will hone in on that. And it's quite nice because if you're somebody that 
isn't in the office, you can get an idea for the sort of natural communication and dialogue that is happening in the room that you might not get when you're in person, especially because normally cameras are quite still uh, and on the team and it's not really like very personal, uh, especially when one person is talking. So that's a great addition. I believe the camera's uh, called Symmetry and it's by a company called Neat. Um, so that's a good addition. The seventh update is more around the together mode scenes. This is something they've really already done uh, in the last couple of months, but they're more pushing on the different variety of, for example, board meetings, cinema, uh, scenes that you can have that help people to see each other better. Uh, and they're a little bit more collaborative, but at the same time, uh, it's, it's sometimes a little bit weird um, seeing them on screen. But I think from what I've heard from people using them in offices, it's actually quite nice because it separates people out versus sort of, sort of puts them together when they're working remotely. They've also done improvements and additions on whiteboard. Um, so if you've got a Surface Hub, you can you know interact with the whiteboard. And I believe on the whiteboard mode, you can also bring in live components too, which is a huge improvement. Now, number eight is they really pushing on whiteboard. It's more of a Miro competitor now. And they also have a huge range of templates available. So you could, for example, if you want to save a bit of time, uh, you want to start collaborating around an agenda or maybe even uh, a few uh, visual concepts, then you can use some of the templates that are available in the whiteboard mode. Now, um, I'm gonna skip forward to number nine. It's meeting fatigue. They really know this is a problem. So what they're trying to do more of is to round up a meeting recap. If you're unable to come to a meeting, for example, if you created that meeting in Microsoft Teams, uh, it will now have a meeting recap, which will contain things like live components, which have been used in the meeting, a recording of the meeting, transcripts from the meeting, and details. Sort of like an all-in-one hub for everything that you've missed so that you don't miss out if you are someone that is remote and want to be able to put time and attention into it. Now, number 10 is, I would say, sort of the stress and the focus aspect of work. Um, it's obviously quite stressful working from home, but Microsoft have put a lot of time and attention into trying to make your day more separated from work. So for example, they have, they, we talked about the morning sort of uh, routine or the morning commute that has been added, but they're putting more time and attention into headspace uh, lessons and meditations that they're rolling out over the next couple of weeks. They're definitely adding more of these and making them available through the platform. They're also introducing something called focus time or focus mode, which looks pretty decent. It includes a Pomodoro timer, lo-fi music, and also the ability to connect it to Microsoft to do tasks, which means that you could focus on a certain period of time. But what I quite like about it is it actually um, has the potential to protect your time as well. So for example, if you didn't have any meetings that people can't book meetings during your focus time, and it also sort of slows um, everyone down in terms of trying to message you during that period of time so that you stay on task. Now, it is awesome to see Microsoft add some additions, and it seems to be that Google and uh, Microsoft are both firing for this hybrid workspace environment. Uh, and it's also a decent shot at hybrid, I would say, because if you think back to about a year and a half ago, this sort of stuff was being talked about, but not really being implemented because there was no need for it. And it's now actually being used. And I think people actually like the fact that they're taking care of remote employees if you were to go remote, which is a great addition. I also loved in this video that they had a clippy meme in the background. It was not a clippy meme, but it was clippy and I thought it was a meme because I thought, wow, uh, they managed to slip that one in there as a poster in the foreground, which is very cool. So um, kudos to Microsoft. It looks really cool, some of the additions they have. And I think they're starting to look at the well-being and hybrid work a lot more. And that's great news for you and I at home who are using Microsoft. Anyway, guys, hopefully you enjoyed today's feature. If you're new here, please do subscribe and make sure you check out more videos here on the channel. But a big thank you and I'll talk to you all very soon. Cheerio.